morning, everybody. Rise and grind. Rise and grind. Game time, Brian. Otherwise known as the mailman. Warming up my car. I am a couple minutes late. Par for the course. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And it's funny, when I go out somewhere, I'm normally, I try and be early. But work, I'm late. So anyway, a little drink action. Um, first things first, uh, obviously we're going to talk about the obvious here. The mass shooting, the, what they're calling it. Uh, I just woke up, I was a late riser this morning. So I don't know all the latest. From what I'm gathering, they're still calling it a mass shooting. Does anybody else, does anybody else believe that it was a mass shooting? The more info I hear, and now it's up to 22 injuries, eight children, um, two dead, including one, the gunman. But I need some of the facts because I'm hearing the gunman was shot last night. So he must have escaped. The gunman was shot last night out in front of a bar. Uh, you could look it up. I believe the last name is Swift. So look it up, but let me know in the comments if you have any more information. I'm, I'm going to be at work. I'm really not going to have time to do research on it. Um, but you tell me. To me, it, it sounds more like a dispute. You could say gang, whatever, whatever. Seems more gang related. And no offense, not to be, um, you know, I'm not trying to be callous or cold, but if it was a mass shooting, you would have thought a hell of a lot more people would be dead. Nobody's looking for a gunman, you know. Uh, if you wanted to kill people, I think you would be able to do so. Um, and there was upwards of six to 800 police on site. Now, I was at that same site. Me, Mark, Primetime, DMV. Uh, we were at the same site. The chef, David Wiley. Uh, last draft. So, but I can tell you one thing. The NFL security is 10 times. I don't know about 10. I, I would say a lot. I'm just going to put out a lot. I can't say 10 times, but a lot more secure. NFL security is the real deal, people. Um, as much money as the... Oh, here we go. We're re-entering the atmosphere. Ooh, God, I love it, though all over the road from crying out loud. Woo! All right. We're good now, peeps. Let's roll, baby. Um, NFL security, you got to go through a couple of series of checkpoints and it brings you to a bottleneck, the opening. And then once you get through the opening, then it's like literally a quarter mile where that place was set up. Up on the hill there, you have Union Station on one side. You have the military. Mark helped me out with the name where we sat. We looked down on the draft, but we were within the bubble. Um, you weren't getting in with a gun. There was wands, everybody. So this is what happens when these parades. Now, you can have all the police in the world, but if you're not frisking or wanting everybody to go through to access the parade it's just everybody it's a free-for-all it's hard for the city i don't believe it was a mass shooter situation but i believe it was more of a fight between two people but if it comes out that it was a mass shooting then obviously it wasn't very well planned out because you know I know there's one radio station girl, uh, she passed away, um, I don't know the details of that, uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to her family, 
shouldn't have to deal with that at a Super Bowl celebration parade. Keep your your bullshit at home. Um, but the NFL security is no joke. Now, when I went to the Hall of Fame, me and Mark Holmes went to the Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. I was surprised because we were just at the draft in April, right? The end of April. And then we went to the Hall of Fame game in beginning of August. And the difference in security, because you got to remember, the Hall of Fame is not a NFL-owned and run operation. The Hall of Fame is not an NFL-owned... They don't use NFL security. It's run by the Canton, Ohio local town. And uh, so I was shocked. I was shocked that um, basically very little. They had some flimsy uh, detection system where you walk through, but people were walking around it. And I was just saying to myself, in this day and age, you need to, like, we need to, uh, unfortunately, it's not cool, it's not, it's not right, it sucks for everybody, you, everybody just wants to get into the stadium, right, everybody just wants to get in and get in their seat or do whatever, we gotta be more careful, you gotta do our due diligence, I know, I sat outside, me and Mark, for 40 minutes before they opened up the gates in Canton, and it was a free-for-all, I mean, yeah, you had your seats to your ticket, but there wasn't very much security we were saying wow no one we just went to the nfl nfl literally is like um nfl security is literally like the president coming to town and i i'm not saying there's guys on roofs with sniper rifles but as far as they literally have a bubble there's a bubble and you are not allowed to drive anything everything's mass transit into the bubble or uh even a because I know I got at the draft last year, there was a bubble. We stayed outside of the bubble, but we were right on the outside. Um, and, and we just took, I just loaded up my uh, Uber and we Ubered. We drove one day, but we Ubered the next couple. And they dropped us right outside the gates. We had to walk all around, go to the proper security. So if you're going to the draft, just a, a quick note, get there early to be able to get through all that stuff. Once you're in, you're in. Um, but if you come back in, you gotta be, you have to go through the security again. And that's the way it should be. Sucks, but that's, no. yeah, there was a lot of people crammed in there. Matter of fact, the fire marshal stopped allowing people to come in there. At one point, that's how many people were inside the draft area where the sh where the shooting was. Uh, so, when I go to Detroit this year, Mark, we got our hotel inside the bubble. We paid the premium price for it. Um, so it is what it is. But now we just hop on this. Detroit has mass transit right next to the hotel. Boom, less than a mile away, or we Uber to the gate there ain't no driving so um it'll be interesting i think it'll be better you know but um very very discouraging people um it stinks and the fact that there were kids injured it seemed like it was a stray bullet type shootout situation and it seems like the fans tackled one of them okay so there was multiple people shooting. Um, it, I'm not trying to get graphic, but if you wanted to shoot, kill people who aren't have any knowledge of what's going on, it doesn't think it would be very hard. So we got to rethink this Super Bowl parade BS, or the town, uh, the local police has to come up with a better system of allowing people in certain designated. You want to go to the parade? Every, you're going to have to go through heavy security. That's just the way it's going to have to be. You know. I'm sorry. But I'm not sorry. So if anybody else has any info. Just leave it in the comments please. Uh, real quick before I get to work. 
the Mike Zimmer press conference. I want everybody's opinions on that also. I thought it was very, very good news for the Cowboys. Um, Mike Zimmer's trying to say that he's not uh, strict and he's not a jerk. He's a jerk, but he's a jerk in a good way. There's no way the players who play for him, such as Deion Sanders, and you know how Deion was when he played. Love the man. Darren Woodson, soon to be Hall of Fame, has been getting shoved aside. And it's BS. Darren Woodson was the green dot on our defense that won three Super Bowls. Ask, ask Mike Zimmer. Ask Bill Parcells. Ask any number of guys. Uh, Darren Woodson should be in the Hall of Fame, but he will tell you how great of a coach Mike Zimmer was and is. And I think at this stage of the career, I think Mike Zimmer is happy and content being a defensive coordinator. I think it's the perfect hire for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, and I think it's perfect for Mike McCarthy. I think Mike McCarthy um, just um, extended his career uh, in Dallas, in my opinion. I first said uh, he'll be fired by the, uh, the bye week. To me, that's the that's going to be determined by what we do with free agency, setting up a draft that we don't have as many picks as we normally do. So, um, let me know what you thought about what Mike Zimmer had to say. Um, don't forget, I do have my two o'clock Eastern Time lunchtime chat. Please put your notification bell on because I know a lot of people come in with five minutes to go. I do it at two o'clock because I have to. I like to. Work, I can work up to six hours before I take my lunch. If I I start at eight a.m. Eastern, nine, ten, and eleven, twelve, one, two. I want to get as far as I possibly can. I have a bigger route, so it's like I want to get as much done so I can take my half hour lunch. Not to say anything, but we don't always get our lunches. That's because you know. I'm just gonna throw it out there, but this allows me to get my lunch, and I should get my lunch. I also get two 10-minute breaks. Yeah, good luck with that. But um, all right, everybody, that's me. Let me know what you think about what about Mike Zimmer because I think it it bodes well. Look for us to, like I said yesterday, look for us to go out and get a stud linebacker. I don't know. I can't tell you if it's Devin White, if it's. The Patrick Queen. I think they're going to allot fundage. They're working on a DAC contract. They're going to have a CD contract done. No doubt. So, um, what is this person doing? Let's go. What are you waiting for? Don't slow down in front of me. Mailman got to go. Jesus. Sorry. Sorry, peeps. All right. Don't forget to check me out 2 o'clock Eastern. Mailman is out. Peace.